Good evening and welcome to 60 Minutes. First tonight, inside the billion dollar cocaine war that stretches all the way from South America to Australia. In the past three years, our federal police have intercepted nearly two tonnes of cocaine on the lucrative Pacific route. Small yachts are loaded up with hundreds of millions of dollars worth of coke on the coast of Ecuador before making the long journey here. The innocent looking yachties breeze into our eastern waters mostly undetected before offloading their cargo to local drug dealers. Hiding contraband below decks is a trick as old as smuggling itself but it's never been as audacious or as dangerous. This is where the journey begins. In the myriad waterways of coastal Ecuador, cocaine is loaded onto boats that will carry it to the markets of America, Europe, and increasingly Australia. But for the crack police commando units hunting down the narco traffickers, it's mission impossible. Is it pure? No matter how much of the stuff they capture... It looks like it's very pure. The flood of cocaine into Australia grows every year. And the way it's getting here is ever more inventive. Here we had a yacht that was part of a, a yacht race. These other participants had no idea that what they were racing with was a yacht that was full of cocaine. All these boats begin their journey in South America. It's more than 7,000 nautical miles of open Pacific Ocean on very small yachts, always with the threat of wild seas and savage storms. And as Andrew Colvin, Assistant Commissioner of the Australian Federal Police warns, there's always the threat of capture. That's a popular and, uh, and lucrative route for, for organised crime to try and penetrate. But as lucrative as it is, it's also risky. It's become a high stakes contest between the world's most powerful crime syndicates and the world's most powerful law enforcement agencies. And caught in the middle, Pacific Island nations like Tonga, now stopping off points on this long but highly profitable new trade route. If it looks like paradise, well, for drug runners trying to avoid cops and customs and border patrols, it pretty much is, except when it goes wrong, as it did for the traffickers on this boat. What happened on board is still a mystery. What we do know is that this yacht set sail from Ecuador, heading for Australia, but somehow ended up here, wrecked on this remote reef. Hidden on board, $120 million worth of cocaine, not so well hidden, one rapidly decomposing body. The corpse was this man, Slovakian national Milan Rinzak, dead at least three weeks before he was found on board the wrecked yacht Jareev. How he died still confounds authorities. The autopsy has been done. There's nothing in that that suggests foul play. But you've got to understand the body uh, had deteriorated considerably in the heat. Grant O'Fee is Tonga's perplexed police chief. If it wasn't foul play, how might have he died? Well, it's as broad as your imagination, really, I guess. I mean, you've got the potential that, uh, I suppose, if you're floating around in the Pacific and you're a bit bored and you like a bit of cocaine and you've got 200 kgs of the stuff, maybe you sample a product, we don't know. So, yeah, it's a mystery. Adding to the intrigue, there were two men aboard the yacht when it left Ecuador. Where is that missing man? I'm not being evasive here, I simply don't know. He's somewhere between Ecuador and Tonga. This was the Jareev just a few months before it set sail. The plush 13-metre yacht was bought in Panama by an unknown buyer who handed over $90,000 in cash. The US Drug Enforcement Agency started tracking it from Ecuador but lost it somewhere in the vast Pacific. Well, it's not 
direct, isn't it? Kurt Coulson is a fishing guide in Tonga who knows these waters well. Definitely not surprised that it ended up on this reef here if uh, nobody was driving it. I fish out here a lot myself and that's how uh, my son and I saw it and we actually found that it was uh, this boat full of drugs. So a drug boat with a dead body on it. <laughs> yeah, kind of creepy. After the alarm was raised, police found 204 kilograms of cocaine neatly sealed in one kilogram blocks inside hidden compartments. Most boats do have cavities like this inside of them. It definitely makes it easy on somebody trying to hide something. Mm. Tonga is a poor country and an easy target for the billion dollar drug cartels looking for a base in the Pacific. No, 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 don't, don't talk to me like that. But even Tongans were shocked when the Speaker of the Parliament, Lord Tui Lekepa, was arrested on charges of conspiring with the Colombian drug cartel to import hundreds of kilos of cocaine into Australia. Lord Tui Lekepa, a member of the Tongan royal family, vouched for Colombian drug boss Obil Gomez to obtain a visitor's visa for Tonga, despite never having met him. Do you know the Colombian drug lord Gomez? Can you talk to my lawyer, please? When police raided Lord Tui Lekepa's house, they found a stash of guns and ammunition. Do you feel that Tonga is being targeted by these drug cartels? I don't know how drug dealers think, but they, they make their business choices, obviously, like anyone else. Is their business choice made easier if you have members of parliament who are happy to be involved in the drug trade, as one of yours has been accused of doing? Yeah, that, well, I imagine that doesn't help. I mean. <laughs> The drug conspiracy charges against Lord Tui Lekepa have now been withdrawn on the grounds of lack of evidence. Excuse me, Lord Tui Lekepa. When we approached him at his home, this not so chivalrous nobleman bolted and left his daughter to do the talking. Um, I'd like to speak to you. Is it your father? Yeah, do you guys want to wait outside? Then brought in some local muscle. He's not sleeping, I just saw him <laughs> drive in. And finally called the police. We just want to talk to him about cocaine. Uh. What's fueling this headlong dash into Australia by the drug cartels is demand. A seemingly insatiable market for the white powder. The cartels are targeting Australia because of the profit. The importers are getting something in the order of uh, 200 to $250,000 a kilo here. In America, you might get $25,000, $30,000 a kilo. Ten times, you're Ten saying. times greater. Former New South Wales Assistant Police Commissioner Clive Small has watched the infatuation with cocaine spread from the stockbroker circuit and party scene to the working class and the outer suburbs. It is the ultimate aspirational drug, isn't it? I mean, you haven't made it unless you're snorting cocaine. And I think that's probably the attraction. I don't think cocaine still has the, uh, has the stigma that some of the other drugs have, and there's always an abundance of it. Just a short time ago, arrested Richard Buttrose, who at the time was driving this blue Mercedes Benz. In just three years, the number of Australians using cocaine jumped by more than 100,000 people to nearly 400,000. If you know where to look, it's everywhere, even though the police make a big show of the drugs they've seized. The Raj moored in Vanuatu on its way to Australia with 750 kilograms of cocaine on board. Estimated street value? $350 million. The Friday Freedom docked in Bundaberg, 300 kilograms. Value? 78 million. The Mayhem of Eden allegedly collected its cargo from another yacht 800 kilometres off the Queensland coast. Seized half a tonne of cocaine, worth $160 million. All caught by the Australian Federal Police, a Hall Assistant Commissioner Andrew Colvin is proud of. What percentage do you think you're getting? I don't know. And I wouldn't want to speculate. Does it worry you that you don't know? Uh, what would worry me is if we weren't seizing and I wasn't confident that we, weren't, that we were dismantling syndicates. 
But we're not at a stage yet where the South American cocaine cowboys are saying, well, Australia is way too hard, we're going somewhere else. Uh, I don't think the South American cocaine cowboys are saying that about any country in the world. Uh, the, the profits are too great. So is the AFP making any dent in this at all? It might appear as though we're seizing a lot of the drugs. But if you're impacting on the market, what you'd be seeing if you were being successful is a periods of short supply of increasing prices. I don't think we've seen a shortage in cocaine for an awful long time.